had some technical difficulties on my last broadcast, so here we are doing it again. Uh, and what we really want to talk about today is part three of Stop Believing the Hype. Uh, you may have seen a couple of my other videos that have been posted in the last several days uh, about my growing frustration with the <laughs> coaching and business advisory type industry or consultants that are um, promoting their services to help leaders and organizations perform better. And uh, part of my message is really about what to look for as a leader. Uh, the, the great part is that, um, you know, there's so many options now for leaders that are looking to take their organization to the next level. The problem is how do you tell the good from the bad from the ugly? Uh, and it can be really confusing in the marketplace. And I, let me start by perhaps just sharing a couple of things that motivated me to start shooting these videos. Uh, first is that uh, we're really passionate at Rhapsody about coaching and the quality of coaching that our clients receive. Uh, we see ourselves as an important voice among many others in the industry that are raising the bar, uh, or at least trying to, in terms of putting coaching back into coaching and making sure that clients experience the kind of support and process that is going to transform their lives and transform their organization. So super passionate about that. Uh, and uh, so part of, that's part of what's motivating these videos. The other motivation that is, you know, bar none, the strongest of all is our passion to support business leaders, period. Uh, when I think of the risk uh, that a business owner takes to leave the safety of the J-O-B to start their own thing, to start their own business and put their own blood, sweat and tears into it. Um, uh, they risk so much in terms of, of, of their money, their time, their family. Uh, they're, they're taking this, this courageous step to provide employment for others and to make a difference in the marketplace. And unfortunately, far too many organizations um, are struggling. And, and when I, I see people offering services to support these kinds of courageous people that are subpar, um, then it, I, I get passionate about that uh, and, and want to provide uh, business leaders like yourselves that are watching uh, either live now, and I can see some folks have joined us, um, or others that uh, may see this video recorded later. Uh, I want to give you some tools, some questions, some things to look for when you're evaluating whether or not you should work with this individual that you're currently engaged with or perhaps will in the future. Um, let, let me start by saying this. Oftentimes what attracts us to someone in this field is uh, charm and charisma. Uh, you know, a lot of business consultants, advisors, coaches, uh, they're on the internet, they're, they, they're using, they're on social media, they have websites, they do speaking engagements. Uh, to promote their services, and uh, certainly charm and charisma, a lot can be said about the value of that in terms of opening doors and, and, and making connections uh, and perhaps creating an opportunity for a conversation to take place. But I really want to encourage you to look beyond charm and charisma, because uh, although those two things may open a, a door to a relationship, they're not enough to maintain one. And uh, you've, got, you've got to hope that there's a lot more under the hood uh, than just the polish on the car. Uh, and, and so you've got to look beyond that. But let me give you some words. They all start with the letter C, so we're going to make this really easy for you. And I'm not going to go too deep on any of these today. We're going to hopefully unpack these in future videos. But I want to give you enough to go with. And the first thing you should be looking for when you're talking to a coach, a consultant, a business advisor of any sort, is their curiosity level. How curious are they? Uh, at Rhapsody, we talk to our team and, and encourage them to develop and nurture insane curiosity because it's the power of the question that transforms and not necessarily the off-the-shelf answers from our past experience. You think of innovation, you think of how fast the marketplace is changing, it's because people are asking powerful questions that are changing the game. And when you're looking at working with someone who you're perhaps going to let into your inner circle to help you with your leadership and your team and your business, you want to make sure that they're curious. And you'll be able to spot that right away in those early discussions. How many questions are they asking? What kinds of questions are they asking? They should be asking the types of questions that are different than what you're used to hearing. They should be making you think deeply as opposed to just presenting uh, you know, 
off the shelf solutions that perhaps uh, they offer everyone they meet to, they meet with. Uh, they should be really seeking to understand your context, your situation, uh, your challenges, uh, because even if they have experience in a, a certain field and, and, and ha you know, through that experience have learned ways to um, uh, solve business problems or leadership challenges, um, you know, context is everything. And it's, it's, it's arrogant to think that in a short conversation with any leader, that, that one could come up with an easy solution uh, or a quick, uh, a quick answer uh, to what is probably a much more complex problem. I see Fiona here uh, saying that one of our coaches surprised her uh, with some of her questions. Um, and it was the searching for the answer uh, that gave her incredible insight. Thank you for that, Fiona. It's the power of the question. Look for curiosity uh, in, in a coach or advisor and if they, they're not very curious, I would second guess whether you want to work with them or not. Um, the other uh, thing you should be looking for beyond curiosity is confidence. Obviously, you want to work with someone who's demonstrating a level of confidence in their ability to help you. Uh, and confidence shows up in different ways. But um, what, this is, I, I think there's a, a correlation, a direct connection, and it was uh, uh, Trevor yesterday when I was talking to him, uh, the co-founder and a great friend of mine, great colleague in the business, who was talking about the direct correlation between confidence and curiosity. The less confident someone is, uh, lack of confidence doesn't always just show up in someone seeing, uh, seeming sheepish or seeming shy or uh, uns unsure of themselves. More often than not, it shows up in business, uh, this lack of confidence, by talking too much, <laughs> it, saying too much. Uh, 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 um, how do I say it? Trying to project something. Uh, they're trying to compensate for something. And so when you meet with someone about your business and they're doing a lot of the talking and a lot of that is, is focused on their abilities and how they've helped others and the results that they've gotten, you know, it, you, you should be second guessing that because true confidence comes through in a, a willingness to uh, listen more than you speak. A real confident uh, leader listens far more than they speak and they ask great, great questions. Someone who talks too much is, is often trying to cover something up. So something for, for you to look for is that confidence, in, that quiet confidence that shows up in the power of questioning. Uh, the third thing you should be looking for in anyone that you're considering bringing, in, bringing into your inner circle is, is compassion. Uh, what's the care factor that you sense from this individual in those early discussions? Does it look like they're just trying to close a sale and sign you up for their latest program? Uh, or does it feel like they're trying to open up a relationship through which they can really help you? Uh, really serve you and, and serve your organization and, and lead to some genuine transformation. Now, at Rhapsody, one of our core values is deep compassion. Uh, another uh, phrase we use for it is fierce kindness, where we're in the trenches, in, in standing in the gap with our clients uh, to help them succeed. Look for compassion. It's a really hard thing to fake, but also a very difficult thing to miss when it shows up. And if you're not sensing that care factor and that compassion, again, you're going to want to ask yourself, uh, is this really the kind of person uh, that I want to be working with? Uh, the fourth thing you should be looking for, of course, is competence. How competent is this person? And, and uh, you, you can learn more about their competence, about asking some great questions about what kind of work they've done in the past. What, what, what organizations have they led successfully? What teams have they led successfully? And how recent is that experience? Uh, just because someone led a team and built a business 30 years ago doesn't mean they've got the wherewithal and the goods to help you now. The, the face of business has changed so much and is constantly changing. What, uh, uh, you know, what competence can they demonstrate in their background? Uh, what about the tools and the resources and the processes they would use to help you? Those also speak uh, to competence. A uh, recent client that uh, just started working with me had uh, had one initial meeting with another consultant that had just started in the business, and uh, you know probably started this business because they were, really wanted to help people, but they had no process, they had no system, they had no tools. It was just 
really advice giving. Uh, and uh, again, if that's all you, you're, 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 you're going to get as a professional advice giver, you probably just go and hang out with uh, uh, your family for a while because there's always someone in our family that's willing to give us lots of advice for free. Uh, but if you're going to work with a coach and you're going to work with a consultant, you want to make sure that the process, they've got tools, they've got resources that can really help you and your organization uh, go to the next level. So they, got, they have to be competent. Finally, character. Uh, what a powerful word. And uh, I know that testing for character is hard to do uh, in when you're first getting to know someone. But again, remember, you're considering letting this person into your inner circle, to your circle of trust, so to speak. Um, and it's so important that you get a, a, a some kind of test of what kind of person would I be working with here? What kind of character do they have? And this is where talking to some of their existing or past clients, uh, getting references, uh, that, so you can have some of those conversations and get a feel uh, for the individual. Again, the conversa conversations you're going to need to have together are high, tr high level trust conversations, and you want to make sure you're having them with the right person. Uh, it was uh, a great colleague of mine. I, it goes by the name Louis Philippe, and uh, he had posted in on one of my other videos uh, that I did recently in LinkedIn on LinkedIn, and he posted that. Uh, most people will open up once they can evaluate the quality of your character and of your process. Uh, the more a person senses that you've got a, a, a quality character, they'll open up to you. So you want to test for that. And as I mentioned, probably the best way to do that is uh, by uh, asking for references. Listen, I prefer a live conversation with a real person. Um, testimonials online certainly are helpful on their, someone's LinkedIn profile um, or uh, on their website. But uh, the, the LinkedIn ones are probably a little bit more genuine because a person has to submit them. Uh, uh, and the way that you, you get them on LinkedIn, it's hard to, to trick them. But unfortunately, folks, you need to be aware there's folks that are saying things and doing things out there to get your business that aren't genuine. So a testimonial on a website isn't all that solid anymore, doesn't really mean anything. If, if at all possible, talk to their clients and find out what kind of person they are and what kind of results uh, they've helped them get. So again, as I uh, summarize this, and thanks for hanging in there for those of you that uh, joined us live here today, remember, don't fall for just charm and charisma. That may get their foot in the door, but it's not enough to keep them there. Look for curiosity, look for confidence, look for compassion, look for competence, and finally, look for character. Thanks for joining me. I hope you found this helpful. We'll talk to you soon, everybody.